There are multiple ways to set up an ADN locally. I will show you two ways to set up an ADN with Docker. First, the fastest and the easiest method is to run this command. And then I'll show you how to set environment variables so that you can use external libraries in the code node. I will also show you how to use Docker Compose instead of running this command. So I already have Docker installed. So I will copy this command. And it started in it and I can open it. So I have to set up my account because this is a, a brand new uh, in it and uh, container in Docker. So I'll just quickly fill in these details. So this is the setup I had for a while. And I'll show you the issue I ran into with this one. So after playing with this setup for a while, I uh, wanted to scrape this website for these surprises. And I used a um, HTTP node and a code node uh, to parse the HTML. And that code node, um, so I'll just show you the code node used a library called Cheerio. So this library was uh, not available in the code node. I'll just run this for now. Okay, I moved myself away so you can see the error. So there's a problem in code node cannot find module Cheerio line one. So that's the issue I ran into. That's uh, basically because this N18 code node, uh, the JavaScript runs in a sandboxed environment, uh, obviously for security reasons, and it doesn't allow external libraries by default. So if we want to use external libraries, we have to set an environment variable to enable that. So let's see how to enable the environment variable. So this is the environment variable and you have to set you can set this to um, a star, which means you can uh, you enable all libraries. You can use anything, or else you could just give uh, comma separated libraries if you want to limit it to particular libraries. Before I move on to adding the environment variable here, I'll just quickly explain what these uh, Docker commands are. If you are not interested in that, just um, please uh, skip ahead so this docker volume create in it in data this will create a named volume uh, volume is a like a folder where you store uh, the data related to an again running in the container so why do we uh, need a volume so that's because uh, when you run in it in in docker it runs in a container environment if for any reason, if you remove the container, you will lose all the data that have been saved. That is your workflows, credentials, and everything. In order to save this data in a in your local machine, this Docker volume is created. You don't even need to run this command because when you say dash v, this is the short for volume. Uh, if that volume is if that volume doesn't exist. It, uh, this command will automatically create that uh, volume for you and then bind it to the um, folder inside the container. And the other thing is uh, this folder is somewhere deep in the Docker installation. You won't uh, see it normally, but you can find out where it is. Uh, but if you want to uh, give a folder that you have created, you can do that too. In here, you just have to uh, give the path to that folder or directory. And it will use that to store the data from in ADN. So, and this command, it will start the container. Um, this IT means uh, it's the interactive and you can uh, access the container through the terminal. And RM means once you stop uh, 
the container it will remove the container so once you remove the container if you don't have this volume binding all your data will be lost uh, the name is the name of the container here this one and uh, this port a p is the port binding which is uh, this one this is the docker image so you can give uh, the environment variable in this command itself like so you just have to give another option e and paste it here i'll just use star for now to allow all uh, libraries so now i'll stop this container and see the container is gone uh, from the list of containers so that means it's removed and i'll try uh, running this again with that environment variable enabled Okay, let's open it up. So my workflow is there. Oh, I haven't saved this previously, but that's fine. I'll try to import it. Okay, I'll try running this now. So, as you can see, it has scraped data with this library. So, that's how you enable external libraries. Now, I don't use this command anymore to run Docker. What I use instead is a Docker Compose file, like this one. So, it has uh, all the details that was in the... Uh, command like the container name the image the port binding um, and uh, the volume so here i have given a folder that i've created in my local file system as the volume to be mounted to this one on the container and the environment you can give the environment uh, variable here itself if you uncomment this but I have an environment file, uh, a separate .env file, which is this one. So you can give other environment variables like the time zone and uh, this one that we're interested in. And we give that uh, file path in here as an env file so once you have this um, file saved somewhere in your local file system you can open a terminal in that location or cd to that location and do okay let's uh, see if the docker container has been stopped or no it hasn't so we have to stop it first and remove that otherwise there'll be a conflict uh, with the name yeah that has been removed uh, so what we do is run this command take a compose up and it starts a container so let's try refreshing this so i need to sign in again it says could not find workflow because that uh, previous workflow was uh, saved to a different volume uh it's not saved here it's somewhere else uh so that's why you can't uh, load that workflow into this instance